it's funny, I, I watched your film this morning and it occurs to me, it's, it's funny that we're doing a, a kind of Q&A because when I watch your films, I actually, I have questions, but they're not questions that I want to ask you. <laughs> they're questions, you know, they're, I, I, they're questions that I, that I have about the things that I'm feeling after your films. And, and um, you know, I almost, I almost hesitate to try to ask you to unfold or make sense of the, the slipperiness and the, and the, the puzzliness, not puzzliness, because I think I associate puzzle more with, you know, it's not like you made a Christopher Nolan movie, mm -hmm. but, but there's something fluid and slippery and, and uh, porous about your filmmaking that rather than asking, though I'm sure people have questions about how to define what they saw, but before we even get there, I just, I just wanted to talk to you about, about this aspect of your style, your porousness, your, your, your way of using time and repetition and other things to really create this uh, philosophical, but also very grounded and material and artistic world like these enclaves of people of artists that you that you make films about i'm just so curious about how your mind works <laughs> i guess really is the, is the yeah is the yeah. takeaway good thanks and uh, thank you cameron and um, i like this but i haven't thought about this idea of the porous but but it's it's an interesting image i think that i when i'm thinking a movie i I have the need to leave certain aspects of it uh, not fully clear or not fully completed so that the audience can be included, you know, so that right. the audience, that, so I like what you, I, I, I echo what you say, your words in terms of like, yeah, at one point I do have questions, but it's not that I want you, I don't want to ask you for the answer. No, right. and I, I, I like that. I, I think that, I haven't thought that much in that respect, but but I think that you gave the answer in a way, uh, in terms of it's not my will, it's a fictional film, it's a film that has a plot or whatever, and it's not abstract, but it does have an intention of not saying everything so as not to be so oppressive, you know, and to try to leave space and room and a mystery in the image and the sound so that, the, so that it can touch each person. No, so that you can right. own a little bit the film. Of course, I'm giving a lot of stimuli. I know that I'm giving stimuli. I, I hope that I'm providing some stimuli. But then I, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't like to overdo it. I wouldn't like to be super pushy on it. I'd like this that, to be more of a dialogue where you need an, like an active viewer in that sense. And I hope that the film goes into some corners of yourself, you know, like that, that, that you and that's the way that I think that you could appropriate it, that it can touch things that has happened to you or that you have experienced, that you have felt, that it provokes an inner, an inner quest in a way. So mm. that's why I, yeah, the idea of pours or places that are not completed or empty is a little, yeah, I need to leave that room so that the viewer can, in my, in my idea, no, of what I've done, uh, can participate you know, can be touched, you know, instead of being like push over or run over or overwhelmed. Well, you know, I mean, one thing that you said, and I think this was in an interview with Film Comment, actually, you, you described your films in terms of um, going to a dinner party. You don't learn everyone's name. You don't hear every anecdote that's being told. You're at a large table, whatever it is. But you do walk away with a sense of, things that have happened, things that were raised, things that affected you. Yeah. Um, even as you don't, even as you're kind of, you know, you don't, you're not hyper aware of the grounded specifics of everything going on. You may forget things that happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. You might I'm not interested know, in that. Yeah, you might not know the name of each individual in the, in the party, but you're still in the conversation. You still right. start the conversation. There are a lot of things that you might not know from that person. Uh, and still you, you, you engage, you are in this sort of uh, social interaction, you don't need to know everything. I, I don't, I'm not too interested in, in the experiences where I need to know everything. I'm, 
I think that the world is a bit more mysterious than that. I think that as soon as someone tells you what they think that it's absolute truth, I should be not trusting that person, you know? So, so it connects with, yeah, what do we believe in, what we don't, how can an object such as a book or a piece of music of a film can excite us instead of like mm -hmm. closing us, instead of like making ourselves feel so sure and comfortable, how can we move the ground a little bit? How, even if it's a very personal sort of ground, you know, even if it's a very intimate, this film, I think that has to do a lot with, with the character of a, this uh, actress, no? Maria Bichard also has to do a lot about like a personal uh, doubt, you know, with, with, with um, thinking about yourself and about your desires, about your ideas of your frustration. So I, I think that in order to, to reach, I need to, to provoke something of that mystery, you know, not, not, not having a narrator that knows everything, producing a network of images and sounds that, that help to, to, to raise questions in that sense. Right, which is why I'm inclined less to ask you um, what any one of your individual films is about, including this one, and more inclined to ask you, uh, what was the spark for this film? I mean, certainly because, you know, anyone who knows your, your work knows that you have an ongoing engagement with Shakespeare, um, yeah. a continued interest in actors and artists yeah. in the making of productions, in rehearsal and and all of these things. Um, yeah. But these are not, you, you, you're doing something very different to me, or at least they affect me differently each time yeah, in each yeah. film. So I'm curious about the spark for this one. Well, uh, first, um, I think that Maria, the main actor, is one very first uh, fire. There's many, no, there's many, there's many, but there's, sure. there's more dominant ones. Um, my, usually my previous film helps me to make the next one like even financially even and, right. and like creatively uh, and in creative terms in in my last film i haven't worked that much with maria she was a, like a secondary role she had a, a supporting role in in hermy and helena so right. i was happy about like working with her again and shakespeare also in my previous film there was not much shakespeare and i liked that there was not that much shakespeare before so now I say, I want more. And actually on this play, Measure for Measure, that I think that is one of my favorites and a very strong one, I'm an amazing one. Um, I wanted to work more with the text, have more text up there. And then I can say, I, there is something formal about the structure and the way the film is and its elliptical procedure that I got, I, I admire a lot like a, a, um, a Mexican Peruvian writer that's called Mario Belatin. Mm -hmm. and, and he wrote a book that's called El Hombre Dinero, The Money Man, if you would translate it, uh, that, uh, that actually some part of it takes place in New York, but the plot is not what I got inspiration from or what got excited. More than inspiration is like getting an excitement, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but there is something about the way that it's constructed, uh, the way that it's structured, that made me think about, oh, could a film be like this? You know, that each paragraph is one sentence only, and that is on, and, and many plot lines and many times are being like needed and make a network that produces like a lot of ambiguity, a lot of movement, a lot of like connections. Um, so, so that put me to start thinking also, and I think that that's why I went to Measure for Measure, uh, after, from my last movie to this, like four years went by, four years where many things happened. And in a way, I don't know, it's because I'm a little bit older or there's like things that happen in the world. Uh, but there was a need for a change of tone. You know, mm. it's not the same, the tone, the comedic tone of, of Midsummer's Night Dream and the dark problem, problem play elements of Measure for Measure. So I think that time doesn't go just like that, you know, that some things remain in times of so much uncertainty and, on, and a lot of horrible things happening that always has happened, like many things have happened, but I don't know, there was a need for, for a change of tone. In these four years, I, 
So I thought that I needed like a different tone in the film as well, you know? So, so to explore that, uh, I, this mix, no, the Maria and her relationship with acting, also my connection with actors and their experience of being actors, no, they talk to me about, you know, this, this very paradoxical situation in which the actor seems to have a lot of power when we're referring to a, a film or a play, but then at the same time, if they are not being asked to come in, if they're not invited, they're not in. So you're de being an actor, you're dependent on someone else pointing at you, which is very cruel in a way. No, I mean, in general, I know, I guess that there's many ways of starting uh, like acting and so on, but, but it's a, it's a, I don't know if you're a writer, you can write, you might not get published, but you write, you exercise your, your interest. But if you're an actor, are you going to act by yourself inside of a room? Maybe, of course you could. I'm, I'm sure that must be quite beautiful, but, but it's not the idea, no? So there were some paradox, some, some topics that were not that uh, um, smooth that I was more interested in. Well, I wanna take what you're saying about actors and, and, and expand on that a little because what really interested me about this film and it makes me want to rewatch your other ones to see if this is something that that you've been uh getting at all along and i, and I hadn't quite put it together but but I, I really i thought a lot even just about the life of a stage actor in terms of the variations in performance and the repetitions of performance and um there's a point in this film um where luciana and marielle uh, are rehearsing the uh the monologue from measure to measure and they're doing it with the stones and each stone has a different sort of uh, character that's supposed to be attributed to the performance. And that was a, a kind of light bulb moment for me. Then from then on, when, when these two women, when we'd see them together, they'd be rehearsing these lines. I really started thinking about um, just the, the labor of acting as, as this life of repetitions yeah. and doing over and doing over, but finding variations uh, each time. And that really, clarified something for me about even the the structure and approach that you take here but also elsewhere that you seem very attuned to not just labor of actors but also the labor of artistic production just mm -hmm. i think of your movies in terms of the the crafts the materials the you know your your close-ups on hands doing things um you just seem very sensitive to the work of uh, making art yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, because you make me think. You made me think about what is it that I'm interested in photographing. No, apart from right. the plot, because a plot we make a plot, we do this, then we do, we invert it, we repeat it, we 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 have fun with with the concept of plot. Uh, but then the true nature of when we I go out to shooting is what is it that I want to capture? No, right. why, why is it that I'm interested in actors? Because in a way I'm not. I'm not from theater, I'm not an actor, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not part, it's not, but there is something about work. There is something about the labor. There is something about seeing, I like those shots of Maria when she's like actually struggling, you know, like when she's right. trying to remember. There's something about the possibility of capturing the, the labor of things, the time that it takes to get something done without faking it, no, 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 without making it like ellipses to tell, oh, she started being so-so and then she ended up being amazing, no, and right. that, like, no, like, I care more about not that, those ellipses, but what is inside of the frame, and in that sense, I might be, like, like, magnetized by these actors performing, acting, and that's why I'm working more in rehearsals, more than in opening nights, no yeah uh, it's more and i'm thinking here you made me you're making you're making me think and imagine that also i haven't talked too much about isabella like i i did q and a's in berlin and that's it it was a long <laughs> time ago <laughs> yeah so so it was like forever I'm, ago I'm, I'm also yeah yeah it's weird it's actually kind of moving to tell you the truth uh so also it's like a little bit of um uh, I haven't found all the words because uh, if you talk to me about the viola or Princess of France, I already know what I have to answer and, and they're not fake, the answers. It's just that those muscles are, have been exercised. 
here right. it's very brand new. So I'm, I'm trying to think from, from scratch and it's interesting. Um, yeah, there is, because also you, in doing those shots of the rehearsals, I, there was a lot of uncertainty when I was doing that. I didn't know exactly if it was going to work. I didn't know exactly what was it that I wanted to capture. Of course, I had some theories, I have some impressions, but right. it's not that I was like like mathematician, you know, even though I could like math, but, but, um, so, but then in the end, when I was reviewing the material, and I'm thinking especially on the rehearsal here, how is it that we can show the act of repeating and the work of an actor um, without making it fully documentary at the same time? No, like how can we make like a new material of this? So the moment of the stones is, is very little of that game, no, of like changing the tone. Yeah. And also like a little game that, that it's a, there is an actual tension between the two actresses, you know? So the right. camera and the mic are, are capturing that. And I think that the film gets stronger when that, those things are actually happening in front of these gadgets, you know? Uh, and then I try to make a plot. And then <laughs> I, I try to, to put here this, here that. And I try to think a structure that allows me that level of um, labor, my own labor, no? Uh, my own way of editing this. I shot this film for two years in four different moments, in four different periods, no? And uh, so I was thinking, writing, shooting, editing, thinking, writing, shooting, and editing, thinking, writing, shooting, and editing, and thinking, shooting, writing, and editing. No, I did all those, uh, like right. all that. And then sound, editing sound on top, no? So, so this found, there is this, this need to capture things that I might not be sure what they are, and then the time and the work to process them into a film and a plot and so on. No, so, um, well, I went a little bit over the top here, but. No, I mean, but I was actually about to ask you um, about your relationship to writing, mm. particularly in the context of, you know, the, the stars of this movie, uh, Maria and Agustina. These are, you, you have repeat collaborators. This is, yeah. this is, this is a part of, yeah. um, you know, especially for those of us who really look forward to your films, it's, it's, it's interesting to see the way that you've developed this this um, kind of group of actors, but also you said photographer, Fernando, yeah. like you, you've developed a, a specific, specific to you visual language. And I see the actors, I know whose movie I'm watching, but the movies themselves vary, even as there there are things that, you know, like Shakespeare, for example, is sort of a through line. Yeah. But But every time I watch one of your movies, I wonder, you know, how are you going into this in terms of the writing and, and the rehearsal of the acting? Like, are you starting with the structure already sort of clear to you? Or is this really, I mean, every movie's found in the edit, but is this really you playing around um, on set and getting different things out of your actors and finding a story in the midst of this? Because what's interesting to me about your films is that I would believe both. I would believe that you improvised these films in a way, but I would also believe that they were very rigorously structured yeah. from the outset. I think that it's time. In the way that I produce, that these films are produced in a highly independent fashion, thanks to the will uh, of the people involved and the Universidad del Cine and Les Frenois in this case, in all the, all the titles that appear there that make the film to be able to be as it is. Right. So I've been given time and this time has been, has helped me not to push things too much and to really like, it, it, you know, like the pot that boils for long. So the thing that you put like, it's like more, it's more, ref not refined, it's a more, um, let me, it's not so improvised. There is some elements at certain points, but it's not so improvised. But as I do have time to redo things, you know, to, 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 to think again, to, to work more, to, to change. I, I can change, I can change. So, because I'm going to shoot now some, so when I started, I started with the thing shot in the mountain. And I thought at first that it was going to be a short film or at least like a first episode. I think, it, no, I thought that it was going to be like a first episode of a film with a couple of episodes. Um, but then I realized while doing it, 
while, while I was shooting, first, when you're shooting, the potatoes are burning. <laughs> like you're, you're not like, oh, let's improvise. Let's, okay. no, no, you are, you're, it's burning, you know? Okay. So you, you, you need to focus, you need to do, I'm struggling, I'm thinking. I'm, I have all these collaborators that are helping me to make the, the thing. It's really like a collective effort that I know that I'm the pusher. I'm the one that is like putting things, but, but I'm not alone. I'm fortunately, I'm not alone. And that's why they repeat the people because I like, and I think that we can keep on exploring new things together. You know, even though we can know some things that we do, we're very interested in doing other things that we haven't done. I haven't been in this sort of tone, for instance. But going back to your question, um, but then when I was, even when I was shooting it, and the writing process was very more schematic. There's not like a huge writing out. The writing could be done like while I'm in the shooting, like a couple of days before, a week before. Everything is a little bit in this sort of rush. Uh, but then the things are written. You know, the things are written. Uh, except, for instance, for the moment of the Shakespeare, not the rehearsal. It's Shakespeare, I translated it. Okay, yeah. And I had the idea that I want how to shoot it, but, but yeah. But, but then when I was still shooting and I finished shooting, I was happy, but I felt that this is not the beginning of the movie. You know, this is, the movie doesn't start in the swimming pool. You know, like, it's weird. It, there's something that it's, so that's why I, 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 I was fortunate enough to work in a way that made me possible not to wrap it up because I need to get it the thing done and, and deliver, but to think again and go back to Buenos Aires and shoot a little bit more. And when I went to shoot the second time, I started like chewing this idea of the very elliptical, you know, the, 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 the element that I was seeing in, in the Mario Bellatin book or even in the Alain René, Je t'aime, Je t'aime film, you know, that, it's, that has other topic. You no, know? René is talking about um, memory and death. It's, it's other things. But, um, but then immediately in the second shooting, I knew that I wanted more shootings and that I really needed like, um, la like layers of time, like real layers of time. I was not going to fake things. I was going to wait till things uh, continue. And in the middle of this, we got the news that Maria was pregnant again. So, so, so then we'll have to wait. We'll have to incorporate this. Of course, I was not thinking about this before. This and that, her pregnancy is something that had happened on a previous film. Yes, um, also. She had three. Oh. three <laughs> yes. Maybe yes. she times them to, to your movies. Well, we do a little bit of work together, I think. <laughs> yes, yes, there is a, yeah, there's, it's not so conscious, but we make things together. Uh, yeah, I, why, why shouldn't someone that is pregnant not work? No, like. Yeah, why absolutely. Should, no, why? Why, why are there more, why aren't there more women that are pregnant in movies with that not being the plot, you know, with that, you know, one thing that we have to think when we were making this is, I don't want to make a film about a mother in a way. It's not that it's the, it's a very important thing in someone's life, of course, but that doesn't mean that that has to be the main axis of uh, of the film. It is an element of the film. It connects with her being an actress. It connects with her frustrations and her ideas. But then how can we put it in a balance that is not oppressive? Mm. You know, how can we do that? I, this was one of the things that I, I tried to work on, you know, with, with them also. You know, how can we make this that it's not dominant and, and that doesn't put just the, a woman in relationship with that? You know? Right. Uh, so this is part of the writing. But again, I think that the, the, the answer more is this idea of time, the possibility of having time to think, think again, throw things out, do new things. And of course, it's limited. We don't, we don't have much money and we don't have much time, but a little bit more that we don't need to hit the mark of anything. The movie has to have an equilibrium that feels good. So when I, and actually when I, the last time that I shot was last, like two August ago, August last year. And I actually thought when I went there to shoot, I say, we might have to shoot in December. So this last December, 
you know, which schedule wise was messy because I, we needed to close the movie, whatever. But, but at the same time, I allow myself to think that maybe if we needed like a fifth period of shooting, we should have it because the movie is more important than any deadline, you know? Uh, so, but then at the end, uh, there was no need for that. But if it would have been, it, uh, we could have done it, you know? So yeah, it's a weird equilibrium of many, many things. But I, I, I really, I, I love hearing about this because that is so, that is just so distinctly independent. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's the sense that your, your film as you're making it could be unanchored from these demands that are put on to the making of films that you are, you know, I mean, I think about what you're saying in terms of, it's something that, that I hear writers talk about, you know, I hear about poets say, I work on the poem a little bit, I put it away in a drawer and don't look at it. I bring it back out and, and things change, I've changed, yeah. the sense of the poem has changed, all these things. That, that a film could be something that is as organic yeah. is is a really i mean it's a really stimulating idea it it's it's certainly not how hollywood works no, um i don't yeah i guess not i don't know much about that but I guess <laughs> yeah it, it, it's it, i don't think it's anyone's sense that that's how yeah. you know a major but movie that, studio works yeah, but then i have a fantasy about this idea of shooting and reshooting when i think about the old studios and so on the idea of the reshoot the idea of the rushes the idea if something was not good they did it again of course, the, the, the machine was so oil, was so, so well oiled that that was happening from one day to the other, no? So it was very fast thinking. But still, the idea of, of like redoing, that you can fail, that you can miss, and then do it again, I really like. I, yes, I usually make this comparison with athletes, no? Cinema and athletes. That the athlete practices. It's not that you go to the, you decide to be someone that jumps, you know, those the people that jump and that you go, you don't, you just go to the Olympics, you know, you, you don't practice in, and a filmmaker sometimes is someone that has a relationship with the writing and pitching, but not with actual shooting, not with actual like shooting, watching, editing, shooting, writing. No, we are like, we have to write a, a script that is like a totem, no? And like this totem that we have there and that, rules a little bit everything why cannot it's not that it, that's why i say it's like if you're asking an athlete just to think about how he's going to jump he or she or they is going to jump and then go to the olympic no and no it's like filmmakers yeah we tend to spend a lot of time like in the writing the word and similar has to do with images and sounds so i i try to give myself an up approach to that that i like to to work in a way that allows me to 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 fail to try again to think the thing uh, differently to to not think that i know everything even though i might sometimes believe it you know so to yeah. doubt a little bit in the process and then having these collaborators to check things and know and make them together and and figuring it out and there's a moment where where the objects, the object somehow is finished. And with this thing, it happened. I didn't think that it was going to finish with the water, for instance, no. And then it felt that the water was working well, you know, that there's something there that it's okay. It's a little bit of a mysterious movie if you want, um, but, um, but I like how it moves. I'm, 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 I'm still processing it because again, no, I finish it, we premiere it, and, and I haven't been able to experience much. For instance, all these, all these comments that you're making, all these things are very stimulant. So I haven't had the opportunity to, to do that, uh, to have those experiences because th that's going back to the movie. No? After you finish it, it's not just showing for the clapping hands or, or, or the tickets. It's also, there is something that it, even though it's cooked, it's still growing, you know? Mm. <laughs> it's still like, uh, um, so, yeah, so again, you know, your questions are making me think and making me go back to, to, to the making of the film, as if making the film will continue after it's done. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. yeah. Well, what, what you're saying really, 
really uh, matches up with, for me, the experience of, of watching your work and something that I, I just always wonder when I'm finished with one of your films is um, how it is that you find these ways to, to mix the very grounded realities of your movies. You know, I, I associate, I, and it's something I was very satisfied to see here. I, I love just uh, your emphasis on women walking places or getting places or, or you know, but, but those, those street scenes and the sound design of those scenes and how I feel like I am outside in a kind of pre-pandemic uh, urban environment, but, but also you find, you know, the, the use of the stones here and, and the use of the, the making of the art installation, et cetera, you find these ways to ground uh, the dilemmas and the ideas of your characters in uh, a reality that even as the organization of the film makes that reality slippery, yeah. I really have always liked that tension between you know, you open with you open with the twelve stones. You open with with this um, with a with a kind of an outright sort of philosophical dilemma or practice or whatever you want to call it. And rather than me watching the rest of the movie trying to figure out how that plays into everything, I watch it and I'm just thinking about how you even found a way to crystallize the problems of the movie yeah. in in these kinds of scenes in in the actions between the characters you know the moments that the two women start to say the monologue at the same time at each other um th things like or, or just stop and look at each other things like that where i i just something's clicking for me and then i i don't immediately know i couldn't immediately write down oh this is the idea yeah yeah but something it, it does something yeah. to me well yeah First, this idea of the concrete, no? This thing of walking in the streets. The movies might be very complex and a little bit abstract. You know, sometimes we might, people might think that we're talking like a Stan Brakhage movie, no? Right. <laughs> or like a Maya Deren film. Um, uh, but no, there, there's characters and so on. But, um, but then I do like certain directness, no? no try not to to you know the, the thing of the street, those streets that also I choose them because I like them. I like Avenida Warnes. You no, know? there's the Warnes Avenue that is a very intense one where there's all these motors and engine and where you, they fix your car, where you go and, and buy the wheel of your car. A very intense place, a very male also, a very male uh, street. And so there is something there that I like capturing, like Agustina going around and walking. It reminds me also of a rehearsal place that we used to rehearse and where viola was shot. So we mix everything, we put everything. But then yeah, there is a directness that I like, that is not so up close, because if you do, do too close, you lose the space. And I like to, that little interaction. It's not sociological, it's not, but, but, but still there is a tension, there is something that is that place at that moment. You see that it's the summer, you see that it's warmness. And if you've been to Buenos Aires and you one day when you go there, it hits. No, I, I like that, that weird abstraction, but peculiarity at the same time. Determination right. and abstraction. There's a weird thing there that I like that crossroad. Um, and then um, the, uh, the, there was another segment in your question that had, that I, when you were talking about, made me again think about the writing process. Made me think again about um, how is it that these things, uh, for instance, the stones, when I started working, in the movie, I didn't have like a, a like a, a, a storyline in regard to the stones, but it's a motif. It's a motif. Sure. It's a motif that when I'm editing, when we're editing with Sebastian Char, that he's the editor and also a filmmaker himself, when we are w thinking of the movie, picking the stones, understanding that there's something in the stones make you cut out other stuff and give. A priority to them. So there, is, there are many things in the things that we shot, but we choose which to focus on. The purple, the stones, uh, the people walking, and, and so they get heightened. It's not that it, it hasn't been written as a, uh, but, but it has been edited into it in a way. And then, all, and then, and then when, when I'm writing again for the, next, for the next shooting, for instance, 
I try to make those things work. Like, let's try to match the purple thing with the stones. No, so, so again, it's this thing about like the writing process with time and the possibility of looking back of what you did and like using it in your favor for the next, you know? And so that's how you need, you need, I don't know if the word, the word is, you know, like, like you need, like you, uh, like you do a sweater. Right, uh, right. Um, and then it's the matter of like what you decide to put and what you decide to leave out. In that sense, we become very rigorous. You know, and that says that you cannot put like a scene of whatever just because you like it, because that waters down the tension, that waters down the focus of a film that as the plot is not the main thing, because at the end of the day, is, uh, an actress wants a role, will she get it or not? Right. No. Time, no? Uh, um, so the plot is very, uh, or, or yeah, it's, it's, it's simple in that sense. But then I've been able to display it for long in a way. Um, and then, yeah, when, for instance, the moment where they're repeating the two of them together, I knew that they were going to like that also. <laughs> That's one of the last things that we shot, if not the last, maybe. Um, so there are things that you're a little bit more aware that they will work, you know, that uh, I need again the text. This, uh, for instance, the text that they repeat a lot, all that, it, that scene was shot last August, no, 2019. But the connection with that line happened in the mountain. When, they, when we were shooting in the mountains, they were fooling around this uh, like uh, tongue twister, <laughs> you know? Uh, they were like, the text was there, the Shakespeare was there, the translation was there, but it was this segment that they kind of fool around a lot. So I decided to leave that. And then when I was looking at the materials, uh, of, no, the shot of the rehearsal in the greenery, in the, in the little forest, I was surprised at the moment that I liked the most included that line. So of course, it's in that moment where you say, ah, I will include that and not the other one. So in the choices that you do in the editing, you start like knitting, and then you say, and in order to make it like even stronger in this like very vaporous or porous structure, I need it again. So when I was shooting a, a year ago, I said, let's use these lines as a sort of connection between the two the, of them. That is a connection that the actresses had, making a little bit fun of the text uh, and of them saying the text. But also, let's use it for the sake of the characters. No? So there is also this, this, this merging of them as characters and them as actresses. No? Um, so yeah, that, <laughs> I yeah. That. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know if this is a it's like my least least favorite phrase, but not so much a question as a comment. Um, I'm I just I'm thinking about you know after the opening segment, uh, seeing seeing the character go to the pool, come back, go to the pool, come back. The way that it seems like a, a performance of the idea of the stones that we just heard in a way, but. What I, I what I just wanted to relate is that as a as a viewer, I immediately feel this tension, mm. it, because it feels like immediately the character is performing this moral dilemma, or or just uh, if not moral, just the the dilemma of choice, the dilemma of doubt, the dilemma of all these things, and just the way that you to use your word, the way you knit these things. Um, I think part of the reason I don't care about plot as much when I'm watching your films is because I kind of coast along on those tensions that you create between the ideas and the way they're manifest in the ways that people behave. Um, you know, I, I'm watching and, I, and I'm listening to the repetitions of the monologue and, you know, there's a part of me that's like, I wonder if there's something in this monologue that has something to do with this play and you know there you know there's echoes there the brother all these things but but what really winds up interesting me is is your attention to the various modes of performing the monologue and the and the relationships that are established through the performance of the monologue yeah. in addition to the monologue itself which of course is is provocative yeah. and <laughs> yeah. I love hearing it over and over yeah. but but it, it just feels like you just are you're dealing with ingredients and you just know how to use these ingredients to stimulate yeah. and and that's a rare to me I think that's a rare accomplishment 
um, that I think we associate with dream logic. Yeah. Um, and I do think that, I do think I feel that in your films, like a, a kind of, I mean, you mentioned Jatem Jatem, that, that feels like a great comparison, but, but again, you're so grounded in the material reality of things yeah, yeah, that, I, that I don't let myself, yeah, I don't let myself totally fall down the dream logic yeah. rabbit hole. But I just, I just wanted to say that, 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 that I, I feel like that is part of the satisfaction. Um, just trust, I, my trust as a viewer in your ability to work through the ingredients that you have in mind. Yeah, I, I believe that the viewer is more intelligent than myself and, and not, so that the film is it's a it's a it's a, an accumulation of stimulus in certain doses that is there to provoke the viewer and to put the viewer into a, 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 a into a into a little bit of a trance into a storytelling thing also um, and um, and I need those echoes that that idea of narrative or plot as as an echo things echo like exactly what you said around the when when she, there is the brother element. But it's not that the film is an adaptation of the plays. No, that, that would be a little bit silly. I feel that you're, you know, that, that the experience is more interesting than that. But still, of course, there is a connection. No, there is an echo. So I like that that echo makes the shots to be together. Makes it, they magnetize the shots in something that is very vaporous, but magnetized, and that it's interesting to go in. I hope that it's interesting to go in you know, and that it reflects upon something of yourself, something private, you know, something that is for you. Uh, but then, yes, the, uh, I, I, I try to, to produce these echoes, like uh, thinking of the writing of the film, the way that the film appears, it's mise en scene, has to do with, with a, also like a way of memory, you know, the viewer and its memory, like the idea of that street, the Warnes street, again, that it always starts the same way with a, with a wall. Yes. And, that right. it, and you don't know if this is being repeated. Or this. So I like to put you in a place of certain, of uncertainty, you know, because I think that that's when you start thinking, when you start connecting, when, when it had, hits deeper in that sense. And, and by producing these echoes, I think that you can get into the thing. You can get into the, the immersion of what a movie is, you no? Know? Like to go to a movie, it's to get immersed into like, like it can be an experience, like a sensorial experience, but it can be also like a plot. It can be a character, it can, something that transports you, uh, not to forget, but to connect yourself. And it, I don't know, maybe I'm talking bullshit, but, um, but I'm trying to, that the things become personal to each viewer. You know that you that they can relate to something. Something touches uh, particularly. So this idea of the the method of the echoes is something that I'm very self very conscious. You no, know? and and then also like moving away from it. It's always like in a movement. It's always like in a coming back and forth in that sense. Um, and if I think that it does wouldn't work, I would have had the chance of reviewing it you know, in a way, uh, in, mm. at, and, at, or put something else so that the echo can continue flowing from one shot to the other one. Uh, but yeah, that, I believe in that way of telling a story. Uh, uh, yeah, it, this film has to do with doubt, with uncertainty, with frustration. And so I think that I needed to create that for the viewer at the same time. Uh, I don't know. That was my 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 my, my roll of dice. <laughs> yeah. My well, thank you for for discussing your film with me. Um, it's really, it's really, yeah. Like I, I said, I think it's a, just a really stimulating piece of work, and, and I was really happy to to be able to pick your brain a little bit. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to have this uh, conversation again. As I told you, it's not that I have talked so much about the film because. After Berlin, uh, I have been had the opportunity to talk about Isabella, so it was great to to meet you also, and yes. uh, and, uh, and and to be able to share to share these these impressions on the film and and also thinking about uh, the things that we do, you know, and how they have an impact or not, or how we're still processing this uh, uh, what we have done. Mm -hmm.